Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody. And it's time for your English class on Saturday morning or afternoon. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody, to my first live class only in English. And I'm doing this class because uh, a lot of people ask me can you speak only in English in your classes and just do the classes in English? And normally I say no, because there are a lot of people that don't understand conversational English, beginners. And so I, I don't want to exclude those people. But my plan is to speak very slowly and help people with a low level understand the conversation and I think the class will be relatively easy to follow. Okay, so um, welcome to everybody. <laughs> Not bad. I'm doing my best, Juan. I'm doing my best. Okay, so um, we're going to learn words with prepositions and this is quite confusing sometimes in English. Uh, sometimes they are verbs, sometimes they are adjectives, um, but they have a preposition, a dependent preposition. And I have, um, thank you, Jessica. <laughs> I have chosen some vocabulary from my, um, from my book, from my book A2, which is uh, not beginner, but sort of a pre-intermediate level. Okay, so first we're going to say thank you to the sponsor today before we begin, because that's very important. So Elsa Speak is the best application for you to learn how to pronounce English on your telephone. And I, I always recommend Elsa Speak because they have like 34 million users around the world which is a lot of people. And I like testing the application myself and seeing the phonetics. They teach you phonetics. They teach you the rhythm, the intonation. And you can do different classes every day and get better and better with your pronunciation. So thank you, Elsa Speak, for um, uh, sponsoring this video. And there is a, or there will be a link in the description for you to get a special discount from Elsa Speak. Okay, all right, so let's continue with our class and uh, let's go. I'm going to put myself in the corner. Yes, here I am. You can see me in the corner. A little bit more light because uh, I have a little problem here with the... Okay, that's better. Right, so words with prepositions. Um, you can see here that we have different words. Now, there is one golden rule in English and... That rule is that I'm going to write the rule on the board here. Let me just get my pens here. OK, so the rule is after a preposition. Preposition. Uh, we always use a verb if, if it's a verb. OK, we always use a verb with I N G. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay, so that's um, super important that you remember this. After a preposition, so prepositions are these little words that we have here. After the prepositions, we always use a verb with I N G. And you're going to see this in the class today. So um, let's start with the first words that are here. So when you're, uh, you can see the translations here because this is from my book. So sorry, but I suppose that's good for you. <laughs> so be good at something. Um, if you say, for example, um, I'm good at, always with the verb to be, I'm good at, now I want to use a verb, uh, I'm good at playing the guitar. So the important thing to remember here is obviously good. The preposition is at, and because after the preposition we have a verb, the verb has the letters ing, like a gerund. So I'm good at playing the guitar. And um, that is a 
fantastic rule in English because it's always, not always, 99.9% uh, always right. Okay, so let's do, I'm going to be uh, introducing these uh, concepts to you, these words to you, giving you examples and maybe you can, um, you can answer me uh, in the chat if I asked you questions. There is a little lag. You know, I ask the question, it's like 20 seconds difference from the time I see the answer. So don't worry if um, I don't answer you immediately, but I'll ask the question and then I'll look at the chat. So don't worry. Okay, so um, we can use here with these expressions, let me just use a blue pen, uh, with good at and bad at, we can use uh, the comparative or the superlative adjectives. So we can say, for example, he's the best at, uh, let's say, speaking English in his class. So when we use good at and bad at, we don't necessarily have to use good. We can use better or we can use the best and bad. We can use worse or we can use the worst. So we can say, for example, um, I'm really this is a very common adverb that we use in English. I'm really like, when you want to be more emphatic on, in a sentence, uh, just remember the word really. I'm really bad at, um, let's say, I'm trying to, I'm writing, I don't want to cover the writing with my body. So I'm writing <laughs> almost like uh, vertically. Uh, I'm really bad at remembering, uh, let's say, names. So uh, bad at. Remember is the verb with ing at the end. I'm really bad at remembering names. So does anybody have any um, techniques um, or is there anybody in the audience that's good at remembering names? I'm really bad at remembering names. Any, any ideas, any techniques? And we could also say something like um, Peter is the worst, which is the superlative of bad. He is the worst um, at, uh, let's say, drawing in his class. Okay, so I'm also going to be talking about the phonetics of these words. So remember, when we see O-R together, normally O-R is or. So if we see, for example, uh, the word more, this would be or. But when we have a W at the beginning, it changes to the long schwa, were, worst. So just remember the, the long schwa. So Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. Now remember when we have a T, if I say this sentence slowly, it's Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. But we don't speak slowly in conversation. We speak quickly. So I would say Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. Now, what am I doing in that sentence? Peter, I'm linking here. Peter is the, this is the schwa, worst, I'm linking, worst, at, worst, at, I don't say at, because this word is a function word. So I change the vowel to the schwa. I don't say t, because I have a d here, which is very difficult, t, d, it's too difficult. So I change the t and I glottal the T and I say uh, drawing, drawing, drawing in. I, I connect these together, drawing in. And then this word here, his, I eliminate the H. This is called elision in phonetics. I'm going to put my phonetics course in the chat if anybody wants to learn everything I'm talking about. Drawing in his class. So now I can say this sentence much more quickly. Peter is in the work but sorry, Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. Peter is the worst at drawing in his class. The only way I can say that sentence quickly is if I do these things. If not, it's impossible. So it's super important to learn not only the phonetic table and how we pronounce you know, the vowels and the consonants, but it's really important to learn things like connected speech. 
what happens when we put these two words together? You know, what happens to the last uh, consonant at the end of this word? So that's important. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm here to teach you those things little by little. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're good at remembering faces. Yeah, Heidi, that's normal. Most people are normally better at remembering faces. The problem is it's embarrassing when you remember a face and you don't remember the name. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Luditros. I'm glad. All right. Here we have a word, which is um, in the dictionary, the pronunciation would be like this. Uh, it's a diphthong. Ua. Ua. Shua. Shua. So that is the very posh. You know, if you're aristocratic and you want to speak very posh, you would say, I'm sure. But most people are not aristocratic and they don't pronounce this word like this in the dictionary. Uh, most people, what we do is we pronounce this word with the long O, which would be sure. Sure. And if you want the American pronunciation, sure. You just pronounce the R at the end. Sure. I'm British, so I don't pronounce this. I just say sure. Sure. So sure of. Uh, so I'm going to ask the audience a question. Tell me, um, is there anything we can be totally sure of? Is there anything you can be totally sure of? OK, um, I can say one thing. So one day we will die. <laughs> One day we'll die, unfortunately. OK, so I'm totally sure of that, that one day we'll die unless you're a vampire. If you're a vampire, then maybe uh, you'll survive <laughs> for a while, for a while, unless unless a vampire hunter finds you. But uh, OK, yeah. So tell me something that you are sure of. For example, I'm sure of the fact that you uh, will learn English. If you keep coming to these Saturday classes, you will. I'm sure of that. I'm absolutely sure of that. OK. All right. That's a good one. Sure. OK. So now we go to uh, this word here. So when you see the letters. Um, uh, OK. Yeah. Sorry, medium. Yeah. I know that uh, some people don't uh, understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to speak slowly for people to understand, but uh, that's it is what it is. I'm sorry. So when you see in English these three letters at the end of a word, it's always a triphthong, which is I and then a schwa. Aya. Aya. So we have words like fire. Or we have words like tire, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, it tires me or um you tire me, for example, I could use it this way. Tire. Uh, what other words do we have? Um, or a wire. A wire. That's another word, which is like something that you connect a computer to the electricity. You need a wire. OK, so here the phonetics of this word would be tire. I would say tire with the schwa. Uh, and then I would connect the D to the of and I would say when we say this word here, um, it's not of like that. It's actually, um, so, sorry, it's not an F. It's a V. And we can make this sound weaker and use the schwa. So this would be of, of. So if I put this here, it's tired of, tired of. Yeah, I'm, so, um, <laughs> The sun, okay, Heidi, well done. Yeah, she said the sun arises. It's not arises, the sun, nearly, well done. The sun rises uh, every morning. Yes, we can be sure of that at the moment, at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Okay, thank you, Marielle, for recommending this channel. Uh, okay, and um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure that you, yeah, Padre, thank you for that. I, I'm sure some words you understand, okay? The phonetics and things just... Uh, Stay here. You'll be OK. You'll be OK. All right. So tired of. Um, I'm going to I'm going to give you an example and uh, you tell me if you're tired of something as well. OK, so I'm tired of listening to negative news. 
I don't think negative news is healthy for your brain because you're just putting its negative input going into your into your brain and your brain's thinking negative things. So I'm tired of uh, listening to or watching negative news. I would like to see some positive news. Why don't they have like positive news channels where they only talk about happy, good things? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Gisela, I know for some people this is better, but, you know, when I have classes with B2 students or C1 students, I always speak in English. But, um, you know, in these classes, we have all different levels. So it's uh, excluding some people when I only speak in English. All right. Let's go to the next word, which is instead of. Instead of, I'm tired of working every day, Maria. No, you can't be tired of working every day. <laughs> work is health. Work is health. That's what I say. You know that the um, one of the unhealthiest things you can do is to retire. Uh, here we have another word. Retire. Yeah. One of, that's a very unhealthy thing to do is to retire for your body. You know, your body is designed to work. So, yeah, um, maybe you should change jobs. That would be an idea. So just uh, to show you here, when we have a verb like retire here, um, and the word begins with a syllable, which is a consonant and an E, that E is always I or the short I, which is I. So it's retire, retire. I'll give you another example. For example, this word here, this would be we stress here. So it's de Demand. Demand. Yes. Okay. So retire. Demand. Demand. Oh, demand. That's not a good example. That's, um, I think it maybe it's with the R. Yeah. Demand. I demand. Demand. No, it's, it's with an I. Yes. That's a good example. Yeah. That's the rule. And that's the rule that I have discovered. It's a consonant plus E. That E is always an I. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Okay, Vicky, don't worry. Uh, it's never too late. It's never too late. So let's go to instead of. Now, this um, is very, the, the pronunciation of instead of is in, ste, and then dov, which I'm going to leave it in the schwa, dov. Instead of. In, ste, dov. Instead of. And um, obviously, if we use a verb after this, we're going to use the ing form. For example, I uh, prefer... I don't know, uh, listening, ing, after prefer, sorry about my handwriting, listening to podcasts instead of, instead of uh, you know, watching television, for example. So important, remember the golden rule of after the preposition, use the ing on the verb instead of watching TV. Okay, so I prefer listening to podcasts this is a word that I hear commonly mispronounced. So it's pod. You have to say pod. It's the D and then it's the K. Podcasts. It's like a stop. Podcasts. Don't explode the D. Don't say podcasts. Just say podcasts. It's difficult here because you have a consonant group at the end, which is very difficult, which is the S-T-S. So it's podcasts. <laughs> I prefer listening to podcasts instead of watching TV, instead of watching TV. Oh, by the way, by the way, I don't know if you know this expression, by the way. Uh, by the way means, um, oh, I nearly forgot to tell you. By the way, I have a podcast and uh, it's called Five Minutes, but in Spanish, five, I mean, the name is in Spanish, Five Minutes of English with Marcus. And uh, you can find this podcast on Spotify, Apple, etc. And yeah, if you can't watch the YouTube videos, you can listen to the podcast in your car. All right. Instead of now, I'm just going to tell you one more thing about this adverb instead. We use, by the way, thank you. <laughs> I have a translator in the class. <laughs> Yeah, Isabel, uh, if it were she prefers listening to, yeah, that's okay. Well, you have to spell prefers properly, but yeah, she prefers, not prefieri. Ah, okay, all right. 
Yeah, that's right. It's in the third per in the third person. She prefers. Sorry, that was in Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Um, I prefer some juice instead of coffee. Mm, I don't agree with that, Diana. I don't think juice is more is uh, healthier than coffee, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, juice has too much fructose. But anyway, let's talk about that another day. Now, just an important thing about the word instead. Uh, we can put that at the end of a sentence. Uh, we can say, for example, um, imagine you say, oh, we go to the cinema, but you don't like the films. And we go there and say, oh, I don't like that film, don't like that film, don't like that film. And I say, well, we... Oh, let's say, I'm going to make a suggestion. I'm going to say, shall we? In English, we say, should we? Should we? Should we go to, um, let's say here, a restaurant? And then at the end of the sentence, this is something we don't do in Spanish, I say, instead. Or the end of the, the, the suggestion. Should we go to a restaurant instead? So that is strange, okay? When it's at the end, we don't use the word of. Should we go to the restaurant, to a restaurant instead? Yeah, why not? Don't like the films. Let's eat hamburgers. Nah, not hamburgers. Let's eat some vegetables. <laughs> okay, so that's instead. Important, the, the pronunciation of that. Uh, satisfied with, I think that's pretty easy. Um, is everybody... Um, Okay, how do you say of and off? Is it the same? Juan Carlos asked a good question there. Okay, so this, the phonetics of this, of, is, when we say it slowly, it's with a V and with an, an O sound. So it's of, of. In conversation, we normally say of, 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 because we're speaking quickly. So this word is a preposition and we weaken the prepositions, we weaken the determinants, we weaken the auxiliary verbs. And the vowel changes to the schwa. And the word off, this here, uh, is always, and so it's the same, sorry, that's the same symbol. It's always the same pronunciation. Off, off. So the difference between these two is this is an F and this is a V. But what's the difference between the F and the V? Your voice, only your voice. <laughs> so this is with your vo voice. Of, of, without your voice, off, off. That's the difference. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Uh, so somebody asked, what's the difference between um, prefer? I prefer, sorry. And the word rather, which is similar to father, but with an R. So we use this in the conditional. Uh, you can say, I'd prefer... This is the conditional, contracted. I would prefer, um, I'd prefer to go, we don't use the ing after prefer in the conditional. So I'd prefer to go to a restaurant, for example. Or we say, I'd rather, and that's very common in English, and then we don't use the word to, we say go. I'd rather go to a restaurant. So the difference is the word to. Probably, I would say maybe that this word is, in my vocabulary, more common than this word. So this is very important that you learn the word rather. Okay, so rather can, be, can mean prefer. And rather can also mean instead of. So you can say uh, rather than, I don't know, uh, hamburger, for example hamburger. So you can say rather than a hamburger, this means instead of. It's another meaning of the word rather. And rather is also an adverb which we put before adjectives. And we can say, for example, it's rather hot, uh, which means um, it's OK. So there are four ways of saying this adverb. You can say rather. You can say quite. You can say fairly, and you can say pretty, which is very informal. So you can say, it's pretty hot, it's fairly hot, it's quite hot, it's rather hot. The only difference is this is informal, these are the most common, and this word, 
we always use it with a negative connotation. So like, it's rather hot. I don't like that. That's negative. Okay, so those are the three uses of the word rather. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Juan, very good. It's an adverb. Off. Um, okay, so different from. Um, yeah, that's easy. Just uh, remember that the word different here. Actually, this is interesting because in the United States, the Americans, they, um, they say different than. <laughs> they say it's different than. Now, grammatically, that is not correct. The, cor the, the correct grammar is different from. That's the preposition to use with different. But I think all the Americans use the word than. And although it's not correct grammatically, when a lot of people do something, it becomes correct. It's like it's accepted. You know, it's like, um, uh, I don't know, Google, for example. Google is a noun, but I Googled it. You know, it's a verb. People use this as a verb now. I Googled it and it's a it's a regular verb. And actually somebody, I don't know if you uh, anybody knows, this is the best translator. Forget Google Translator. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But anyway, uh, DeepL, if you want to translate texts, for example, and sentences, DeepL is the best translator. I heard somebody say uh, the other day, I'm going to DeepL it. I'm going to DeepL it. So, you know, this isn't nowhere near as big as Google, but people are using it as a verb now. So when something is used by many people, it's accepted as correct. So different than, that's what the Americans say. The correct way is different from, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to say that this word here, phonetically, um, here we stress the word at the beginning. diff a Rent, okay, so this is my um, stressed syllable at the beginning, and this is the unstressed syllable after the stressed syllable. And here I have the letter R. So when I have a schwa here, different, and I have the letter R or L or M or N or T, what do I do? I eliminate that schwa. So I have the word different. This is another schwa, different, different. And you can see that with many of those uh, famous words that people um, generally don't pronounce well. Like, for example, chocolate. No, this is the stress syllable. This is the schwa eliminated because we have the L. Chocolate, chocolate. Or this one here. Vegetable. No, this is the stress syllable. This is the schwa. Here I have a T, eliminate the schwa, vegetable. Okay, that's called schwa deletion or syncope is another thing. Okay, and the last word I have here is afraid of. So um, let's think of um, something that you are afraid of. I'm going to tell you three things that I'm afraid of, right? The first thing is... I'm going to be very vulnerable at the moment. So I'm, uh, I'm afraid of heights in general. Yeah, that includes flying, because obviously when you're flying, it's very high. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I think maybe, um, yeah, thank you, medium, limonirade, or, or lemon tree, you could say uh, in English, lemon tree. That's how I remember it. Lemon, no, lemon, yeah, lemon tree has the TR of the tree, yeah. Yeah, okay, so uh, I'm afraid of heights. Um, uh, I don't know why. I think maybe in a past life, I'm starting to think that I used to be a pilot <laughs> and in the war, and my plane was shot down, and uh, I maybe I died in the plane, you know, crashing, something like that. I don't know why I think that, but anyway. Uh, I'm afraid of spiders. Don't like spiders. Not the small ones, but the, you know, the big ones. I don't mind snakes. I don't mind other animals, but I just don't like spiders. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe in a past life something happened. And uh, what else am I afraid of? I'm afraid of uh, speaking in public. Uh, I know I'm speaking in public now, but I'm okay because I'm in my little room. Uh, it's just a camera. 
And I know there's I know there's 256 people uh, watching this. Like if you're watching. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm afraid of speaking in public. So, yeah, it's I mean, I have spoken in public a few times, but uh, it's not something I enjoy doing. I, I don't enjoy the anxiety before. I enjoy it afterwards. And the feeling afterwards is like, wow, that was fantastic. But uh, yeah, yeah, you can say scared of as well. Uh, Luth, that's okay. Afraid of the darkness, DNS. Yeah, okay. Well, that, yeah. The problem is, you know, if you go to the swim in the sea, for example, swim in the sea, that's okay, you know, especially if it's not deep and you're in a, a nice sea. But as soon as the lights go out and it's dark, that's, I mean, I'm afraid of swimming in the sea at night and it's the same sea, the same place, the same little fish, but it's the fear of the unknown, isn't it? What's in that water? Suddenly, it's full of monsters. <laughs> That's your uh, survival. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Marina. <laughs> okay. Afraid of. Is everybody uh, enjoying this class? Because it's the first time I'm doing a 100% English class. Uh, JD, is ChatGPT a good translator? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have used it to, and I have translated things. I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why? Uh, Luditros says, why is it speaking in public? Because of is a preposition. So we have to use the verb with ing. It's because of the prepositions. That's the golden rule. Yeah. Okay. Uh, use two. Uh, okay. So yeah, Candida, she says, uh, you can be afraid and then we can say to do something. I'm afraid to speak in public. But if I use the preposition, I have to use the ing. If I say of, it's with ing. And you can say I'm afraid that as well. I'm afraid that plus subject plus verb. You can do that. So there are different ways of doing it. OK, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And uh, I've chosen you know, something that I think is relatively easy to follow, which is you're seeing the words on the screen and I'm trying to mix the phonetics with these things. So great. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah. So don't forget uh, to give it a like if you're enjoying the lesson. Let me go to the next page here, which is uh, probably the number one correction I make in the classroom is depend on. It's not a big problem, but, you know, everybody says depend of. And I understand why, because you say that in Spanish. You say of, you don't say on. So um, it's very common to use depend on with the uh, neutral pronoun and say, sorry, you don't say it's, uh, you say it. And then on the verb, we have the S, which you connect to the on. It depends on. So it depends on the weather, for example. Yeah. Are you having a barbecue this weekend? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Remember, I don't know is the contraction of I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the weather. It depends on the weather. Yeah. OK. And if you want to say uh, it depends on and, in, and you want to use a hypothetical word here, uh, we use the word weather. I just remembered because, you know, we have weather, like, um, yeah, the weather. And then we have the word weather, which is the same as if. So it depends on if. OK, you can say uh, you could say if it depends on if he comes early. Yeah, but it's probably more common to use the word weather because the difference between these two hypothetical uh, words is that when you want to express a doubt, like at the end of the sentence, say, or not, then we use this word. We use weather. So are you going to have a barbecue this weekend? Uh, it depends on whether um, I have enough time, for example, or not. I don't have to say, sorry, I don't have to say or not. It's understood because I'm using the word weather. And so that's the difference between those two words. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> depends on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Juan. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so depend on. Uh, prefer to? Well, we just saw the word prefer. So just to remember that the preposition with the word prefer is to. So I uh, prefer um, carrots <laughs> to uh, parsnips. And if you don't know what parsnips are, I can't tell you in Spanish because this is a 100% English class, but it's kind of similar to a carrot, but uh, I can't remember the name of the person who's in Brighton, but it's kind of like, it's white. It's a white color. Very, very common in England. And, um, you know, when we have Sunday lunch, Sunday lunch is like the Sunday we have uh, meat with two vegetables. Normally it could be carrots, it could be broccoli. Uh, it's very often it's parsnips. And um, yeah, it's uh, something that we eat very common in English. But anyway, they're called parsnips. I prefer carrots to parsnips. Not necessarily. They are both healthy. Carrots have more um, carbohydrates. So if you're ketogenic, parsnips. Yeah. All right. So full of. Yeah. Alanis Morissette says, uh, whether with or without you. Yeah. OK. I haven't heard that song. Oh, I don't know it. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's not that chin chin. That is turnip. It's similar because the turnip is kind of more round. Uh, you're thinking of something else. Whether the weather is good or not, you can say that, Noel. You can say that, yeah. Whether 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 the weather is good or not, yeah. So um, I'm not going to say the word, but uh, yeah, maybe I'm not sure, Juan. I'm not sure exactly what it is. In in I know the word in Spanish, but I'm not going to say it because I've promised to speak only in. Uh, English today and I don't want to I don't want to make a mistake there so while I'm here I'm just going to say very quickly just going to go here and uh, say very quickly uh, whoops yeah just going to say thank you to our sponsor today which is Elsa Speak it's the application that I always recommend uh, for you to practice your pronunciation on your phone and um, it's a great application I I promote this application in my videos and I like um, practicing myself with it and, you know, not checking my own pronunciation, but, you know, checking the capabilities of the app to actually detect the different sounds and the phonemes. And it's really good. And it gives you the IPA, you know, the International Phonetic Alphabet. It gives you those symbols. It tells you which word you did wrong. You can repeat just that word. It puts words into sentences. You can start at a very easy level and get more and more difficult. So uh, thank you for sponsoring today, Elsa Speak. There will be a link in the description where you can get an amazing discount of 85% for your lifetime membership, which is pretty cool, I think. Okay, so back to the class. Here we are. Yeah, okay. All right, Maria Jerez. She said the word. Well done. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. It's, uh, okay, Dianes. It, you, if the link in the description, which isn't in the description at the moment, but it, or, yeah, it's in the description, I think. Uh, or maybe not, but it will be at the end of the live. There is a free link for you to test Elsa for seven days, the professional, um, the pro version. So, yeah. Okay, Mario Carmen, well done. All right. You have to pay, obviously. Uh, there is a free version and there is a paid version, but the free version is very limited. But you can test the paid version for a week to see if you like it. Okay, so full of, uh, full of. We have an expression in English to say uh, some, we say this. He's full of beans. Yeah, so beans are uh, <laughs> very common in, in the United Kingdom, especially, and the United States, I think, as well. Uh, they come in like tomato sauce, little uh, beans. If you're full of beans, it means that you're really kind of like happy and energetic and excited. For example, uh, yeah. You haven't you haven't tasted them. They're delicious. So, for example, I don't know what's wrong with the boss today. He's full of beans. Maybe he has a new contract. I don't know. Something like that. So full of that's uh, uh, full of. Uh, again, we're using this full. Of, we can say of or of full of full of more common to say full of. OK, uh, here we have. I'm going to put the phonetics here. Uh, care because i'm british i don't use this uh, r but it would be care 
care if I was American, but I do pronounce it because I have a vowel here. So this word is like this, and I connect the R here. So it's care, rebout, care, rebout. Yeah, care about, care about. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I'm thinking of a song with the words care about, but I can't think of it at the moment. Yeah, um, so... Um, which is my English level in this class? Well, I would say, Alma, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know how you highlighted that. Oh, because you're a member. Okay, that's why you got that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Alma is asking, uh, am I talking in like B1 or B2? A mixture, I would say. It's kind of mixture between B1 and B2. Sometimes I'm talking a bit more quickly, you know, because what's the difference between B1 and B2? 2,000 words? Not only that, but it's also the fluency uh, the understanding, the structures. Um, but for me, you know, I think that B1 and B2 should be like the same level with just a lot of vocabulary because the grammar doesn't change that much between B1 and P2. It's pretty similar. And so, um, yeah, I'm kind of like a mixture of B1 and B2. Care about, yeah. For example, do you care about what people say about you? I do. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you're on social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and you have a hundred positive comments, and then you have one comment that is like, not necessarily from a hater, but somebody saying something bad about you. I don't know if that's considered a hater. I don't think they hate you. You will remember that comment like for the next 24 hours and you forget the hundred positive comments. So yeah, I think everybody cares about what people say about them. But um, maybe uh, with time, you learn not to care about those things. But it's, it's very difficult to just like completely ignore some kind of criticism. Why? This is my, um, you know, why are people scared of um, public speaking? Why are people scared of criticism on social media or what's called... Um, uh, social cancelling, it's called. It's also called ostracism. So ostracism. Now, this is what I think, okay? Many, many years ago, when we were living in the tribe, okay, everything was okay if you're in the tribe. That's you. <laughs> you are here, all right? Now, if you are ostracized, that means that if you are, uh, like, excluded from the tribe... So now you're not here, you're here. Um, obviously, it's a bit lonely, but that's OK. But many, many years ago, if you're outside the tribe, there are different things out here. For example, there's no food or it's not easy to find the food. Um, there are other tribes and they are like enemies and there are dangerous animals. So basically, this is what I think. If you are ostracized, if you are criticized, uh, speaking in public puts you in front of a lot of people, tribe, and you could be criticized and you could say, oh, no, and they throw tomatoes at you. So basically, if you're outside the tribe, it's more likely, more probable that you're going to die. And so that's what I think is the problem with, you know, anxiety of public speaking, for example. You're standing in front of whatever, 50, 100,000 people, and if they don't like you, you're outside and you can die. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't know. Let me know uh, your opinions there in the in the comments. So yeah, ostracism. Yeah, okay. So it's uh, ostra si. Oops, ostracism. Yeah, okay. Only no ninety three likes. Well, okay. Phonetics is the same for all levels. Yes, thanks, one. That's true. Uh, 200 likes. Oh, okay, it's getting better. Yeah, well done. All right, so ostracism. Uh, yeah, exclusion. It's also called uh, social cancelling as well in English. Social cancelling, you know, people ignoring you. Uh, it's probably the same in Spanish. I don't know exactly the word. Okay, care about. So let's go down. This is the number two word that I correct <laughs> every day. This is number one. So this is like, uh, yeah, let's put a hashtag here, number one. And this is in second place, number two. And it's agree with. Why? Because in Spanish, you use the verb to be. And in, in English, 
we don't use um, the verb to be. You can see here it's I agree with or I disagree with. So that's super important to, well, not super important, but it's a difference if you want to speak correctly, uh, especially if you want to ask a question. You don't say, are you agree with? You say, do you agree with? Or did you? Did you agree with? Did you agree with him? So, um, for example, do you agree with everything people say? No, I don't agree with everything people say. Uh, I agree with some things. You have to be assertive, <laughs> which is you're not uh, authoritative and you're not submissive, but you're assertive, which is like in the middle, you know? So if you don't agree, say so. That's okay. You can have your opinion. Or somebody wants you to do something. If you don't want to do it, you know, don't be a people pleaser. Say no. You know, I'm sorry. I can't help you tomorrow. I have other plans. That's being assertive. So that's another uh, life skill. <laughs> okay, let's go down here and uh, go to this verb here. I like this verb because, um, thank you, Amador. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where it's banned it doesn't exist, I guess. Okay, all right. 230 likes. Thank you, Rosalba, for the update there. And we're doing very well. Everybody okay? Yeah, you understand most of the class. I will say, right, I will say, I'm not speaking the same way I would speak to a friend. I'm not speaking super, super fast, all right, because I want people to understand. See that structure? I want object people to understand. That's a difficult construction for Spanish people because it's different in Spanish. I want, we don't say que, we don't say that. I want people to understand. Yeah, and uh, so I'm not speaking at native, natural, sorry, <laughs> normal speech. I'm uh, speaking B1, B2, B1, B2, you know. All right, so phonetics for this here. There are two words that you have to remember. We don't pronounce the L. Well, no, more than two, actually. But these two are very similar. So here, the sound, the vowel of these words is the long O which in English, British English, is with your lips very rounded. So it's or. So this is talk, 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 no L. So the phonetics is this, talk. And if we want to use it in the ING, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm talking about uh, sport. I'm talking. Uh, if you want the American pronunciation, then... Um, you don't round your lips so much. You say, talk. I'm talking. I'm talking about sport. That would be the American pronunciation. So uh, I say talk, they say talk. I say walk, they say walk. I say, I'm walking. I'm walking on sunshine. Or I'm walking. I'm walking on sunshine. I'm walking. And then here, uh, this is also, uh, we don't pronounce the L, but it's a different sound. This is Ah, uh, half. I hear a lot of people say strange things that you don't understand. So it's half. Uh, what's the time now? It's uh, half seven. Half seven. Okay. And also a uh, half, half. And the uh, American pronunciation would be half. It's half seven. I say half. They say half. So similar, but not exactly the same. All right. So we've got two more words here. So we've got uh, this one here. I'm not going to say the word. I'm going to give you the phonetics first, which is that, all right? So uh, you can see that it's a bit strange here, but in phonetics, it's super easy. So it's um, R, R, laugh, about. So we connect about with the F, and we have here the schwa, and then we stress here. Laugh about. So what are you laughing about? Or don't laugh about that. <laughs> laugh, laugh. The American pronunciation would be laugh, laugh. They would say more that laugh. Yeah, we're laughing, laughing. I think. Yeah. Okay. I say laugh in British English. Laugh about. So, uh, yeah. Do you laugh about yourself sometimes? I like laughing about myself because, you know, I think it's important to laugh. Not about. Sorry. Not about. Laugh at. So you laugh about something, you laugh at uh, somebody. So I'm laughing at 
myself, for example. Yeah. And the last one here is this word here. So the X, when we have an X, um, when we have an X which is uh, stressed, when we stress here at the beginning, the X is a KS. When we stress the X, when we stress the symbol, uh, sorry, the, the second symbol here, the X is a GZ. So this is... Um, explain or exam so this is just the k we uh, voice the k g voice the s z eg zam ek explain 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 to yeah explain it to me uh, yeah <laughs> yeah okay so um i'm explaining some words to you with prepositions i hope you understand and um yeah. And I'm also explaining phonetics to you. I'm explaining some phonetics to you at the same time. OK, so uh, that was um, you want to talk about history. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Wilfredo, for that uh, comment. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, Everybody's saying thank you. So I, I uh, I'm very grateful also that um, you enjoyed the class today. Uh, I'm trying uh, to include as many people as possible. And um, yeah, today it's only speaking English. Um, next lesson will probably be different. You know, I like to make every class completely different from the last class. And so um, let me know in the comments, um, maybe like a one out of 10, how you would rate this class. You know, if it's like a five or a six or a three or a four. Um, depending on the content, not necessarily on me speaking English, but like, you know, words with prepositions, you need this vocabulary, there's some, you learn the vocabulary and you learn the prepositions and you learn the phonetics. So I think that's good. So, um, yeah, you don't have to say 10 out of 10, <laughs> but if you say it, it might be good for the algorithm. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. So that's the, the end of the lesson for today. It's just a bit of an experiment to, uh, see, how it goes uh, talking uh, only in English in the class and uh, I enjoyed it I enjoyed the class and it's great to uh, it's great to see so many people in the class saying that they understand what I'm saying as well which is fantastic and um, <laughs> around 50s yeah intangible I like your name that's very good I'm 50 I'm 50 too so yeah all right um, on the TV and the phone. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just going to say thank you one more time to the sponsor of today, which is Elsa Speak, the best application on a mobile phone for learning how to pronounce English. And I'll also say that if you want to do an English course, not an English course, if you want to do a phonetics course, because Elsa Speak is, it does have daily lessons where you're learning how to pronounce words. But if you want to learn like the really uh, kind of, um, let's say the uh, the back end of, of phonetics of why we say those things and how to do them like one by one. I'll always, as always, in the chat here, um, put my phonetics course here uh, if you're interested in that. If you're interested in, if you only have a basic level, you're probably not here. <laughs> so, but I'm going to put the basic course in the chat because maybe you have a friend or somebody that wants to do basic English, which is very similar to what I was doing today in the class, the way I was introducing the vocabulary. But I ask questions in the course and I let the students answer me. And if you want to come to my Zoom classes uh, like live on Saturdays, um, which are OK. <laughs> yeah, it's here. Those are my Zoom classes. Um Okay, great. Uh, Mimi, yeah. Okay, uh, study watching videos. I've improved my listening skills. Now that I understand most have spoken English. That's fantastic, Jesus. I'm very good. Pleased to see that. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, yeah. Much and many. Much for uncountable. Many for countables. 70%. That's not bad, uh, Pablo. That's very good. Yep, okay. You're welcome, Jessica. You're welcome, uh, John Freddy and uh, Alejandra and all of those people. Thank you so much for being here and um, I'll see you next Saturday, all right? Well, tomorrow there's a great video coming out on YouTube. So yeah, maybe I'll see you tomorrow, but I'll see you live next Saturday. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, have a great weekend and uh, 
I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Take care. Take care. Be safe.